comparison, 1994's Northridge earthquake killed 57 people and caused tens of billions of dollars in damage at a magnitude 6.7. Now the USGS estimates that if Puente Hills fault line produces a full rupture, damage could top $252 billion. Hundreds of thousands of people would be displaced and anywhere from three to 8,000 people could die. Imagine waking up to the ground shaking so violently that buildings crumble and roads split open. This isn't a scene from a movie, but a terrifying reality that could strike any day. Scientists warn that a massive earthquake, far more devastating than anything we've seen, is looming on the horizon, with fault lines like the San Andreas and Sumatran ready to unleash unimaginable destruction. The question isn't if, but when. Are we truly prepared for the deadliest earthquake in history? Stay tuned as we get into the details of it all. San Andreas Fault. The recent earthquake that jolted the Southland is sparking concern and highlighting a much smaller but potentially more threatening fault line. The fault running from the Pasadena area to Puente Hills has been very active in recent months. KTLA's Rachel Menatov has more from Highland Park. <laughs> Angelinos felt the jolt, the shaking of a 4.4 magnitude earthquake this week. When you think of California, images of sunny beaches and Hollywood glamour might come to mind. But beneath all that beauty lies one of the most dangerous fault lines in the world, the San Andreas Fault. This fault is like the backbone of California, stretching roughly 800 miles from the southern end near the Salton Sea through the densely populated areas of Los Angeles and San Francisco and up to the northern part of the state. The San Andreas Fault marks the boundary between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate, two colossal tectonic plates that are constantly grinding past each other. Originated from the Puente Hills Fault, which is 25 miles long and runs from Glendale to Pasadena to Puente Hills. It's been really active in recent months, much more so than in past years. This movement isn't smooth. It's more like two giant jagged rocks scraping against one another, building up tension over time. Every now and then, this tension is released in the form of an earthquake. The San Andreas Fault has a notorious history of producing some of California's most devastating earthquakes. The 1906 San Francisco earthquake is perhaps the most famous. This 8.3 magnitude quake struck in the early morning hours of April 18th, reducing much of San Francisco to rubble and igniting fires that raged through the city for days. Nearly 3,000 people lost their lives, and the city was forever changed. Then, in 1989, the Loma Prieta earthquake struck during the World Series, a 6.9 magnitude quake that caused severe damage in the San Francisco Bay Area. The images of the collapsed sections of the Bay Bridge and the Marina District in flames are etched into the collective memory of Californians. These events serve as stark reminders of the destructive power of the San Andreas Fault. The issue of retrofitting is coming back to the forefront. In 2015, the LA City Council voted to require certain older buildings to undergo retrofits to make them more resilient. Owners had until 2023 to make those changes. According to analysis from the LA Times, there are currently 6,000 buildings potentially in need of earthquake updates in LA County. KTLA consumer expert David Lazarus says luckily technology and infrastructure has improved enormously over the decades. But what really keeps geologists and residents alike on edge is the looming threat of the big one. This term refers to a hypothetical but inevitable earthquake that would be much larger than anything we've seen in recent history. Scientists have been studying the San Andreas Fault for decades and their models suggest that a major earthquake, potentially an 8.0 or even higher, is long overdue. This quake could strike anywhere along the fault, but the most concerning areas are near Los Angeles and San Francisco, where millions of people live and work. For decades, people living on the West Coast have been warned about an earthquake so strong it could produce a tsunami the size of a 10-story building. They call it the big one. The big one. The big one. Now, researchers finally have a better picture of how and where that big one could happen. We do expect this event to be catastrophic. And based on what we know now, some are predicting that when it does arrive, it could be even more catastrophic than we imagined. 
the consequences of the big one would be catastrophic. We're talking about the kind of earthquake that could cause widespread destruction, toppling skyscrapers, collapsing bridges, and triggering landslides. In a worst case scenario, the damage could be so severe that it might take years, even decades to fully recover. Beyond the immediate physical damage, the economic impact would be enormous. California's economy is the largest in the United States, and a massive earthquake could disrupt everything from agriculture to technology, with ripple effects felt across the entire country and beyond. A ticking time bomb. Hayward Fault is the most likely to produce a large earthquake. There's roughly a one in three chance over the next 30 years that there will be a large earthquake on the Hayward Fault. Next is the Hayward Fault. While the San Andreas Fault tends to hog the spotlight, there's another fault in California that's equally, if not more, dangerous, the Hayward Fault. This fault runs through the San Francisco Bay Area, one of the most densely populated regions in the state, making it a source of significant concern for geologists and residents alike. The Hayward Fault stretches about 62 miles from San Pablo Bay in the north cutting through cities like Berkeley, Oakland, and Fremont, before merging with the Calaveras Fault to the south. Scientists tell us it's due to a phenomenon called slow slip, and it's happening north of us out in the Pacific. The uh, Juan de Fuca plate is what it's called, nicknamed, uh, is sliding under North America, and sometimes it's locked and sometimes it slips, but when it slips, it's building up stress elsewhere on the fault. The Hayward Fault is often referred to as a tectonic time bomb. And for good reason. This fault is notorious for producing powerful earthquakes on a regular basis, with major quakes occurring roughly every 140 to 170 years. The last significant earthquake along this fault occurred in 1868, a 6.8 magnitude quake that struck when the region was still largely rural. Despite the lower population density at the time, the quake caused considerable damage, flattening buildings and changing the landscape. If you're liking this video so far, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Megaquakes of magnitude 9 or more are rare. It's the smaller ones on land that tend to concern most people. Professor McLean says at some point, it's likely there will be significant seismic activity along the Bay Area's Hayward Fault. And that has the potential of shaking us pretty well here in the Central Valley, much more than the Loma Prieta. But here's the catch. It's been over 150 years since that quake, which means the Hayward Fault is overdue for another major earthquake. And unlike in 1868, the San Francisco Bay Area is now home to millions of people with sprawling urban developments, tech hubs, and some of the most expensive real estate in the world. The fault literally runs beneath schools, homes, highways, and even the critical infrastructure that supplies water and electricity to the region. This makes the potential impact of a large earthquake even more terrifying. If a major earthquake were to strike the Hayward Fault today, the consequences would be nothing short of catastrophic. Scientists estimate that a quake similar in magnitude to the one in 1868 could cause over $165 billion in damage, making it the most costly natural disaster in U.S. history. Entire neighborhoods could be leveled, and the infrastructure that keeps the Bay Area running could be severely compromised. Bridges like the Bay Bridge and the Richmond-San Rafael Bridge, which are critical for transportation, could be damaged or even destroyed cutting off access to entire regions, the human toll would be equally devastating. With millions of people living and working in the area, the potential for loss of life is tragically high. Emergency services would be overwhelmed, hospitals would be inundated with casualties, and the disruption to daily life would be immense. The economic impact would ripple out far beyond the Bay Area, affecting businesses across the country and even globally, given the region's significance in the tech and finance industries. The scary part is that there's no way to predict exactly when this earthquake will strike. It could happen tomorrow, 
next year, or even decades from now. But the evidence suggests that it's not a matter of if, but when. And when it does happen, the Bay Area will be faced with one of the greatest challenges in its history, Sumatran Fault Line. If there's one place on Earth that really knows the wrath of nature, it's Indonesia. This country is practically the poster child for seismic activity, and that's largely due to the Sumatran Fault Line. This fault line runs like a jagged scar down the western edge of Sumatra, Indonesia's largest island. Geographically speaking, the Sumatran Fault Line sits at the meeting point of not just two, but three massive tectonic plates, the Eurasian Plate, the Australian Plate, and the Pacific Plate. These plates are constantly on the move, grinding against each other, and every so often, they slip and release an enormous amount of energy in the form of an earthquake. What makes the Sumatran Fault Line particularly dangerous is its location. It's part of what geologists call the Ring of Fire, a horseshoe-shaped zone in the Pacific Ocean Basin that's notorious for earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. The Sumatran Fault Line runs parallel to the Sunda Trench, where the Indo-Australian Plate is slowly sliding beneath the Eurasian Plate in a process called subduction. This subduction zone is one of the most seismically active regions on the planet, and it's responsible for some of the deadliest earthquakes and tsunamis in history. Speaking of history, you can't talk about the Sumatran Fault Line without bringing up the 2004 tsunami. On December 26, 2004, the earth beneath the Indian Ocean shook with a magnitude of 9.1, making it one of the strongest earthquakes ever recorded. This massive undersea quake was caused by a sudden movement along the fault line where the Indo-Australian plate thrust up against the Eurasian plate. The force of this movement displaced an enormous amount of water, sending a massive tsunami racing across the Indian Ocean. The devastation that followed was unimaginable. When the tsunami hit the shores of Sumatra, it unleashed waves as high as 100 feet, wiping out entire coastal communities in minutes. The city of Banda Aceh was one of the hardest hit, with nearly 170,000 people losing their lives. But the horror didn't stop there. The tsunami radiated outward, striking countries as far away as Thailand, Sri Lanka, India, and even the east coast of Africa. By the time the waves finally receded, more than 230,000 people across 14 countries were dead, and millions were left homeless. The 2004 tsunami was not just a natural disaster. It was a global tragedy, the kind that leaves a scar on the collective memory of humanity. Let us know your thoughts about this video in the comments, and remember to like and subscribe for more intriguing discoveries like this. See you in the next video.